Hello everybody. Although I've done a video similar to this before, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna turn this uh, burgundy belt into a black belt. This one's kind of deteriorating and I wanna get rid of it. I'm gonna show you how we can get a scuffed belt to look a lot better just by polishing it up. I'm also gonna show you how to tell the difference between a cheap belt and an expensive belt and what the difference is. This one's $30 and this one's more like $130. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Now, first of all, let me give you the simple version because I've done a similar video to this to before. I'm gonna link it in the description uh, and right here in the video. A uh, cheap belt versus a more expensive belt. Now, I shouldn't say expensive because I don't pay a lot for a lot of my stuff, but let's look at what is the difference between a $30 belt and something that would retail for probably more like $130. Because on the first glance, you might think, well, this one is kind of scuffed. You might actually think this one looks better, and I'll explain why. So this is an Allen Edmonds belt, and it says they're handcrafted in USA. There's the size, uh, and that's 35 inch. Is that bottom number there? 36, I'm sorry, 36 inches, the bottom number there. That fits me. Now, although this one just says made in USA, it doesn't tell you what the material is, but if you go to their website, this is what's called full grain aniline leather. So let me give you the brief rundown of how leather is created. So you can see here a full hide comes into a tannery and it is split. So the top side is the top grain leather. The bottom is the split grain. Genuine leather is going to come from the split grain. Genuine leather, all that means is it's not fake. And that's the lowest grade of leather. Just like on your own skin, the top outer layer is the toughest and is the best. So from the top layer, if it is the, the best leather you're gonna see is full grain aniline leather. Aniline means it has just a transparent or translucent dye. There's nothing over top of it. Now, sometimes what you have is, especially if the animal is raised in climates where there's a lot of bug bites or scars and things like that, they will grind off the top layer of the leather and then coat it with some kind of, I don't know what it's made of, if it's acrylic or plastic, but that's where corrected grain leather comes in. You can obviously start with a much worse quality leather if you're going to apply a coating over it. So that's corrected grain leather. The main challenge with it is, generally speaking, uh, the corrected grain coating is at some point going to crack and or peel off. Now let's look at this one. This is like a $30 belt and if you can see here uh, right there it says synthetic leather China. So in other words this is not even genuine leather and let me show you the reason that you don't want this. If you go down to the area that flexes boom right there. This coating cracks peels and it's done. There's really nothing you can do about this except throw it away and go buy a new one. So that is why you don't want synthetic leather. Another word you'll see is faux leather, F-A-U-X. That's a French word for fake um, or bonded leather. So let's take a look at another one here. This one is actually reversible. So you can pull, it's spring loaded, and you can wear the brown side or the black side, which is handy. But again, being a low grade of leather, you can see what's happening to it. That side's not horrible, you know, but look at that side. You can see the fabric under there. That is not real leather. That's not even genuine leather. Let me take an area of this belt that is a little bit scuffed and I'll show you the great thing about full grain aniline leather. By the way, do you see some of these wrinkles? That's character. This comes from a real animal and that's obviously a pretty large piece of hide, right? So you should see variation. What in nature is exactly the same color? Look at the sky. The sky is not exactly the same color all the way across. So I'm just gonna take here my favorite brand of shoe polish, Pure Polish. You can get this as purepolish.com. Don't make money uh, uh, at this point when you buy anything from Pure Polish, but I just really like the stuff. And this is, by the way, walnut. This is cream polish, which is what I want for this. Cream polish has more pigment in it. And let's give it a second. See, I get a little bit on my finger. And now you see those lighter color areas. I mean, look at that. And this is gonna penetrate into the leather. This is going to moisturize it. And do you see how wonderfully that comes back to life? Because this is not a plastic coating, right? Just let this sit for a few minutes, go and buff it, and it's going to be beautiful. You'll see here at the end of the video, okay? So that's my first lesson on why you would want full grain aniline leather, but it is a higher uh, price tag because you have 
more expensive material. That's what makes a hundred and some dollar belt a hundred and some dollars. Let me go here down here at the end. See, watch that. See that lack of color? Watch this. Just a little bit. See, I'm just like placing my finger and just moving it an eighth inch. Very little product. And I'm going to go back and forth because I want it to get in those creases and, and folds and things. And watch what happens. I'm not even, I haven't even buffed it out yet. So that's the beauty of full grain leather. See that spot there? Let's put a little more color back in that. Isn't that wonderful? All right. Now, let me show you something else. I like this belt. And this one I also got at a thrift store. Uh, by the way, this one was too long. So do you see this portion that's folded over? I unstitched it. I pulled it through more, I cut a new hole, and I stitched it closed with those loop stitches, and I shortened this belt. Now the interesting thing is, this says full grain leather handcrafted in China, okay? I'm a little more leery of things that come from China, just the quality is never as good. It says full grain leather, but this looks corrected. In other words, corrected grain leather, they put a coating, a plastic or acrylic coating over the surface, right? Which is why you saw those fake leather belts, but the uh, corrected grain leather will crack in much the same fashion. Here's an example of corrected grain leather and how it cracks over time. Do you see that acrylic coating has cracked? And once it starts cracking like that, it's pretty much done. It's not the actual leather that's cracking, it's the coating on top of the leather. Do you see that? Okay, that's why you want to avoid corrected grain. Now the reason I bring that up is corrected grain is very difficult to dye. So, here's what I'm going to do. Here's a decent quality belt. This is a Joseph A. Banks belt. Fine Italian leather. It is made in China, but at least it's Italian leather. It doesn't say if it's genuine leather or full grain leather, but this looks to me like full grain leather. Do you see the pores? So this looks like a, a, a good, I would classify this as a good belt, something that should last a long time. Now, what I'm going to do is I have a nice burgundy belt here. I actually have two decent burgundy belts. Okay, so I'm going to take this one. This one was actually tan when I got it. I dyed it burgundy, but I don't have a decent black belt, right? So this one is a Polo Ralph Lauren belt. Um, and this says genuine leather, if you can see there, made in China. So it looks like full grain to me, but I know this looks up dye. Now, how I'm going to do this, I have lots of Feebing's leather dyes. I do have black around here. And these things even come with a cotton dauber. But I'm not going to use that just to show you that you can do this without anything fancy. I'm actually just going to use hedge dressing. You can use kiwi, doesn't matter. But basically, this kind of stuff with a little sponge on the tip, the sponge applicator, this is edge dressing. This is made for recoloring the edges of leather soles. Okay, But this is just black dye, so I'm just going to take it. I'm gonna make sure that this this is a good belt to dye because it doesn't have wax. I haven't waxed this or anything, so there's nothing on it, okay? And watch, let's get some dye going. That may take a couple times. Make sure I get down to the edge there because the edge is rounded, so I gotta tip it. You see how that's soaking in? You can see it puddle a little bit, and then do you see how it does soak in, right? And I'm gonna get the rest of this belt, and I'm gonna come back to the video. Now you can see I'm putting a second coat on. I can still see a tinge of uh, the uh, burgundy color. So I'm going over a second time. Oops, just touched my knuckle onto it. Anyway, you get the idea, putting on a second coat. And now you can see the black has taken. It looks completely, feels completely dry. Now I'm gonna take pure polish. This is cleaner conditioner, cleaner conditioner. The ingredients on this are listed on the back and they are orange oil, beeswax, coconut oil. Cleaner and conditioner sound like two different things. I want to condition, not clean. So I'm gonna just use my bare fingers because that's gonna put more of the nutrients into the leather. If I were to want to clean, I would use a soft absorbent cloth. Now, do you see how that changes the color, right? The moisturiz moisturization, you're gonna add some shine to it. So this is conditioning the leather because you know the dye has alcohol and it's not necessarily the best thing for the leather. Okay. 
and I'm getting up even in the areas where you don't see because I want to I want the leather to be in good condition not just look pretty using very small amounts goes quite a long way you see that so you watch I'm gonna and some of the dye is coming back out that's okay so maybe what I'm gonna do is to keep the dye off my finger because I'm being a little bit impatient just to be frank with you guys because I want to get this done I don't want to wait hours for the the dye so I'm gonna load up the rag a little more because some of the conditioner is going to go in to the rag. So I'm not pressing very hard. I want the dye to take. I'm just doing this more to protect my fingers than the belt. Just giving a little bit of conditioning. That should be good. go. Some of the dye comes back out. That's normal. And here's the Allen Edmonds belt that I polished and nice and shined up. And all the scuffs are gone and recolored. Doesn't that look nice? That's a little bit of, that was dust on there. All right? You see how awesome the full grain inline leather holds up over time? By the way, I'm going to use some of that same walnut. I know this is not walnut. This is darker. This is a medium brown, but it doesn't ever hurt to use a lighter. So watch that area. By the way, this is a old Johnston and Murphy belt that I thrifted. And one of the things that you're gonna notice, another thing, let me give you another hallmark of a good quality belt, the buckle. Can you see there? First of all, Johnston and Murphy, solid brass made in Italy. So in other words, this buckle is solid brass. Compared to something like this, that is cheaper, that is just plated, you see what happens when it's just plated? It wears through the coating, right? So just another little note. Here's another example of a nice higher quality belt. This belt here, I bought actually from Tickner's on sale. And you can see there, it says, Aniline Kip Skin Shoulders. What is Kip Skin? Well, usually shoes, high quality shoes, are usually made from calf skin. Kip Skin means that it's a calf that, or cow that was older than a calf, but not, you know, grown up. This was over a hundred bucks, but I did get it on sale for $50. And you can see where it gets a little bit scuffed just from use. So let's, this case here, I am going to use uh, because I don't have a medium brown in the pure polish. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, a medium brown color here, number 37. This is sapphire. Clean polish. I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger here. And see, that's quite scuffed. It took quite a bit of that color off. And this should help it out. May not make it perfect. Bring all the color back. You could, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could, you know, dye it, but I'm not going to show you the whole thing, but I'll come back and brush that area. I'll show you how that specific area uh, comes out after I brush it off. Let me still let it sit up here and kind of set up and soak in for maybe five or 10 minutes. And here's the Tickner's belt and there's that spot. And it's uh, right here. You can actually still see it. It's fairly difficult to see though. You see what I'm saying? I get it in just the right light. You can still sell it, tell it's there. I didn't dye it, just polish. I did a couple rounds. And look how beautiful this belt looks. And I've had this belt for three or four years. And look, no cracking, no signs of any distress anywhere. And that's what you get with a high quality leather. And here's the Johnston and Murphy belt. Look how nice that brush cleans up. Right? Beautiful. All the scuffs are pretty much invisible. And by the way, this one also says Aniline Kipskin Shoulders Made in USA. It was a size 42. Uh, a link in the other video. I took those two screws out, shortened the belt up, and that's why I marked it 36. So now it's my size. Those two set screws basically let you just pull the belt out. So this belt has now been uh, conditioned with the pure polish cleaner conditioner. 
The Pure Polish Cleaner Conditioner, you do need to let this set in before you brush the belt. Give it a good hour to set in. Uh, I know I get impatient and rush stuff and don't you know, wait sometimes, but this you really need to let it set in. Otherwise you get a little bit of a tacky surface. It just doesn't work well. Let it soak in. Now, black paste wax. This is paste wax, not cream. Okay, so I'm gonna take just a little bit and I'm not gonna show you doing all the whole belt, but I'm gonna put some on there. You get the idea. You can see it dulling up. And I am going to get this whole thing done uh, off camera, and then I'll come back after it's ready to brush in about five or 10 minutes, and I'll brush it off and I'll show you the results, okay? Now let me brush off the black. It's had a few minutes to set up. Look at that, huh? Isn't that nice? There was no shine on it whatsoever when we, uh, before, after the, after the dye. There we go, now I got a nice black belt to wear. Remember, dressing well is an art form and it can be learned. I paired this belt a couple days later with a pair of Johnson & Murphy Melton corrected grain cap to Oxfords with a nice spit shine uh, for the calling hours, a charcoal gray Joseph A. Bank suit with a Brooks Brothers dress shirt, and a thrifted Lauren Ralph Lauren tie, along with a pocket square and a vintage Seiko watch that was my father's. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you've ever gotten someone else to buy a nice pair of Goodyear welted shoes and they thanked you and stopped buying crappy shoes, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel. All right, God bless and have an amazing day. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one.